back to Think Outside the Board. Today, we are going to review Exit, The Abandoned Cabin. Now, in order to talk about this game, I'm going to show you some of the components of the game and talk about how some of the mechanics work, but I'm not going to reveal any of the puzzles in the game. So, the first thing that's going to happen when you get this game is you're going to have this little leaflet, which is just going to tell you some very general things about how the game works and some of the mechanics and things like that. You're also going to have this, which is sort of a little, uh, has some puzzles in it and some kind of like flavor text and things like that. It kind of sets up uh, the game itself. You're also going to have this wheel. Now this wheel is how you will determine uh, your answers to certain puzzles. What will happen is you'll be getting some kind of three-digit or three-character uh, code when you finish a puzzle. Could be could be three colors, could be three numbers, but in any event, you're going to turn the wheel. And you'll each of the puzzles has a different icon, so you'll have a an icon like this. Let's say you're working on the triangle puzzle and you thought you had a solution. You will then turn the wheel to line up the various whether there are numbers or colors here, and then you'll have a number in this little window. Now, that number will direct you to these answer cards. You're gonna have three decks of cards in this game. There is the riddle deck, which you will slowly reveal more and more of these cards as you solve puzzles. Anytime you see one of these riddle cards in materials of the game, you'll be able to add those riddle cards um, to what you're working with. So that's, that's one of the three decks. The other one are these answer cards. So anytime you do something and you plug in an answer to this wheel, you'll get an answer card and you'll pick up that numbered answer card and take a look at it. Now there's really two types of answer cards you could pull. Some of them, I'm not going to show you which one they are, but some of them like this one, We'll just have a big X saying, no, nope, you're wrong. <laughs> That's not the correct answer. Some of them, again, I'm going to cover up the number of the card so you don't know what it is, but some of them will have something like this. Now, there are 11 puzzles in this game. 10 of them are related to, as you can see, let's get this in the right place. 10 of them are related to these various desks or lock boxes or doors or cupboards or things in the room. And then one of them is, is, is different. It's kind of like an additional puzzle. But when you get the correct answer to something, you'll get a card that has all those boxes on it. And then you will need to pick the container that you're working on. Um, if you're if you're playing the game like above board and not cheating, you should be fine because whatever you're working on, there will be a symbol and there will be a container and you will just follow that and it'll send you to another card and that card will basically tell you if you did the puzzle correctly that you've solved this puzzle. Sometimes that will then give you more riddle cards. So those are most of the components to this game. The only other components are these hint cards. and. For every, you can see they're, see they're, they're organized by symbol type. So for every symbol type, you're going to have three hint cards. You know, these are, these are the three of the circles. This is for the pl a plus symbol. There's ten different symbols throughout the game. Well, eleven if you, if you count that one that's not associated with a container. And if I talk about these hint cards, I'm going to start to get into some of the problems of the game. So let's, let's just go there first. These hint cards are problematic because there are no hints on any of these hint cards. <laughs> That's problem one with the game. Okay, the first hint card that you pull in any one type of, you know, any grouping of three, the first hint card will basically just reiterate the puzzle for you. Now, in some cases that may be helpful because it'll tell you what you need for the puzzle. It'll say like, when you're working on this puzzle, you should have this riddle card, this riddle card, and this riddle card, or maybe this component. 
So you'll know if you don't have all the pieces. So in some cases, in very few cases, this first hint card may be somewhat helpful, somewhat. But again, other than identifying the components within the puzzle, all it's going to do is re-explain the puzzle to you. There's no actual hints on this beyond letting you know there may be something in this puzzle that you, don't, that you do not have yet, okay? The other two hint cards are just solutions to the puzzle. <laughs> they do not, there are no hint cards that say, well, if you're stuck on this puzzle, let me give you this piece of the answer and point you in this direction, which is what I feel would be the best way to incorporate hints. No, what's gonna happen is this second hint card will basically spell out the entire puzzle to you. It might do it a little obliquely, a little bit, but if for some reason you have trouble understanding this card, which most people won't, this card again gives you the answer and it spells it out so much that even if you're dumb as a brick, you're going you're gonna to understand it from this card. But the problem with these hint cards is that none of them give you hints. Uh, if you draw that first one, like I said, that all it does is reiterate the puzzle, that might make you a little angry. And then if you, if you draw any of the others that give you the entire answer, that might make you even angrier. You might just want a little push, a little nudge, a little hint in one direction. It's not going to happen. It's going to ruin the entire puzzle for you. So that is my first problem with, with the exit series. Um, my second not, not really a problem, but my caveat is that, you know, this is being sold as a board game, sold in board game shop, shops. This is not a board game. There's nothing board game about this. There's no board to it. Not that we have to be that specific in our definition of board game, but there's no game to it either, really. Um, other than what I've described to you about this, you know, the way that you look up uh, puzzles, there's no set series of mechanics. There's no game. So really what this is, is just you trying to solve 11 puzzles. And so the whole experience of that comes down to the 11 puzzles. Now the problem with making a game like this, that's designed to appeal to a mass audience, right, is that everyone's experience with puzzles is going to be different. You know, someone may, may, may play this game and think every puzzle in here is ridiculously, stupidly easy. Someone else might play this game and think that a good number of the puzzles are really, really difficult. But it's, it's going to vary very much uh, from person to person. Now, I definitely lean on it being much, much too easy. And the other thing is, this game retails for about 15 bucks. And people will compare that to escape rooms and say, well, if you go to an escape room, you're paying 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars per person. So if you take your family and you've got six people or you're going with friends, you could easily drop hundreds of dollars on an escape room. And this is an escape room in, in a box. And it's only 15 bucks for the whole group. And that is all true. What I would say though is that an escape room, theoretically, is giving you an experience. You're going to a place and you're having an experience and you're getting to deal with tangible objects. Now, that is not the case with, with this, you know? They do um, even kind of sell Exit the Abandoned, well, the whole Exit series as being destructible, meaning that you are gonna play this once, you're gonna destroy it, and no one will ever be able to play it again. There's also another series of games called the Unlock series, and those games do not have that caveat. So when you're playing the unlock games, you can solve the puzzles, nothing gets destroyed, and then it can be played again. It may not be able to be played by you because you know the answers, but you could give it to a family member or a friend or donate it to a children's hospital or you know, give it away or sell it, and other people will be able to enjoy the unlock series. Now, the... The Exit series, which I'm going to hold this box up again, the Exit series is marketed as that not being the case with it. And I think because of that, when my fiance and I played it, we sort of took great delight in destroying things. I was writing on cards and, and we really destroyed it. So like this version is not getting, it's, it's not getting passed on to anybody because we destroyed it. 
The thing is, we didn't need to do that. And what we found out from playing it is that there is one puzzle where you needed to fold a piece of paper that you, you could have gotten away with not folding it, you know, with not making a crease. You kind of could have bent it and, and seen what you needed to see and then and, and not folded it. And then there's one other puzzle where you cut up some stuff if you wanted to, but I think you very easily could have kind of gotten around and not cut up anything. So knowing that, it is entirely possible to play this in a way where you do not destroy it and you can pass it on. And I think with everything that's going on in the world with, uh, with climate change and with littering and all of these problems, I don't think we really need to put a lot of games out there that are one-time uses that just get destroyed. Now, legacy games do that as well, but in a legacy game, most of them you're playing a campaign. So instead of a one-time experience that may take you an hour or two, you are playing maybe 12 games, maybe more, um, and you're playing them with a group of people, and you're getting many, many, many more hours of experience with it. Um, so I think that's, even though they're more expensive, I think when you kind of crunch the numbers and figure out how many gameplay sessions you get in those legacy games, I think you're getting more, more game to them. Now, I don't want to harsh on this either. Uh, we definitely enjoyed playing it and we enjoyed our times with the puzzles. But some of the puzzles, most of the puzzles, we found very, very easy. A couple of them we got stuck on briefly, but we figured our way through it. And we also, I very much did not want to use any hint cards because I didn't want to have this experience of learning too much from a hint card and feeling like it was solved for me and then feeling that my experience with the game was less than it could have been. So we took a little more time than most people would. We took about, I think about two and a half hours to finish it because I pretty much, I don't want to say I flatly refused to look at hint cards, but I was, I was trying not to go there. And because of that, I didn't, I didn't know until we finished and I went and I looked at these health cards um, how unhelpful they were. And I think if I had gone to them in the game and gotten a card that you know, only reiterated the puzzle and then another card that solved the whole thing for me, I think I would have been really, really upset. So your mileage will vary with the puzzles. It will. It just depends on who you are. It depends on how quickly, you know, certain things make sense to your brain and whether those kinds of puzzles are the ones in this box. Um, I do not know whether other games in the Exit series are more destructive or if you can kind of cheat your way around the destructive element like I think you can do very easily with this game. And... I also don't know how the puzzles are in the other games. All I know are my experiences with the puzzles in this game, which for me, I probably would say I think they're too easy and there's not enough going on in them. Now, when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, because uh, I was born in 73, so when I was a teenager growing up in the 80s, I had a subscription to a magazine called Games Magazine. And it was a really, really neat magazine with all these puzzles. They had crosswords, they had uh, word searches, but those were just the beginning. They had some very, very intelligent, cleverly designed, well-made puzzles. And this game to me feels like one puzzle you might find in Games Magazine that might take a two or three page spread. Now, in a Games Magazine, you might have 20, 30, 40, 50 different puzzles. And you could get that magazine for far less than this game. And the fact that this game probably would have been only a two to three page spread worth of puzzles in that magazine that was, I don't know, six or seven bucks maybe. Um, it just seems like such a low value you're getting for the exit value, the exit series. So I don't want to slam the game. You know, if I was forced to, I'm not going to give it a number rating, but if I was forced to give it a number rating, it would be somewhere kind of in the middle range. Uh, as I said, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed our time with it. We enjoyed the puzzles. 
but we didn't think that they were particularly challenging, let's say. We did think that they were clever. There were clever aspects to the design of the puzzles and uh, some, some of the physical design, but they just weren't challenging enough. Certainly for a $15 price tag, I wanted more game for that. Um, I did get this on a big sale. I think I picked it up for six, seven, eight bucks, somewhere in that range. So I think if you were to see an exit game um, around that price range, I'd say sure. Give it a shot. Buy it. Play it. See what you think. If you don't like it, it's only six or seven bucks. I think for 15 bucks, if I'd spent $15 on this for essentially 11 puzzles, most of which I thought were not that challenging and fairly easy, I'd probably feel like I blew some money. So <laughs> that is the end of this review for Exit the Abandoned Cabin. Um, I'm really, I'm really kind of somewhere in here if I was going to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But I think I have presented to, to you um, kind of what you need to know to make an informed decision. First of all, you need to know that these health cards are not going to help you in any way. Not really, unless the first one where you're just trying to check and see if you have all the components you need to complete a puzzle or not. Um, and I think you know it's not, it's not really a game. It's not a board game. It's not really a game at all. You're just solving puzzles, 11 puzzles. And then, then there's the content of the puzzles and whether there's something or not you would enjoy. And that's very gonna, that, that will very much be up to an individual person. But at least you know that going in. And now you can make an informed decision. And thank you very much for watching this review. So if you made it all the way to the end, please like, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified when, for, when further videos are published, hit the alarm bell as well. Thank you.